court
Yeah, I mean, this, you know, there was a lot of work done on um, the urban service, urban service boundary map. Um, I agree that this is really hard to read and it's, you know, faded and, and whatnot, but, you know, that should answer everybody's question because it's based on gravity, which is the watershed. So, yeah, so, you just need to make sure you have the map and it's readable. Yeah, I've seen comments that you can look at it and weigh it. Excuse me. Yeah, I've, I've seen copies that are better than that. One. So, so, could that be able to come up the next, yeah. next meeting? Yeah, we'll put that over. Um, then the other update, uh, as you know, I think we had our housing needs assessment. We have a housing advisory board that is working right now on what we're calling community conversations on housing and they will happen in April, there will be four of them. And uh, we're finalizing the PowerPoint for those uh, conversations. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> And um, they will be happening the 4th, the 5th, the 9th, and the 21st of April uh, at the Baptist Church, the Mills Lawn, um, the senior center and John Bryan, four different times, four different days of the week, so that we can attract people who can't come one day or one time, they can come another time. Could you get those days again? The fourth, fourth in the evening. That's a Wednesday. The fifth is a Thursday, I think. That the third, fifth is the uh, senior center. The fourth is Mills Lawn at seven. The ninth is a Monday at 6 o'clock at the Baptist Church. The um, 21st is a Saturday at 2 o'clock at probably in rooms A and B. So it would be great for Planning Commission, to, for all of the Planning Commission members to be able to come to one of them. They're all going to be the same thing happening. Um, the other thing that we have started working on, the, the, advisory board is contacting potential, well, not necessarily potential consultants for us, but people who work in developing low income housing, workforce housing, mixed income housing. And so we've had two conversations so far tomorrow, another one to get ideas of kind of strategies and plan ways of planning for housing and so we're developing a list of potential strategies that could be used to develop this kind of housing in Yellow Springs and we're probably bringing a list of strategies to planning commission again to weigh in. The council will be weighing in on it, the advisory board will be weighing in on it and um, probably makes sense to have planning commission to look at that too. I've also developed a very, very graph timeline of how this might play out this year. And um, count, we'll be talking about it tomorrow night at council meeting. That timeline. Thank you for that. And I, and I can pass that on. Once it seems a little more <coughs> realistic. So what's the, um, I'm a little confused. Um, if you're looking for strategies on how to develop affordable housing, whatever that might yeah, mean. Yeah. Uh, and you're also now just putting out the housing needs assessment. It seems like there's a cart before the horse here. I mean, if, if the housing needs assessment says that we need housing across the board and the percentages of which, including rentals, ownerships, and all those things, that's a strategy. No, that, that expresses the need, it doesn't express the strategy. Well, but it, it would seem to me that the housing needs assessment would state that a strategy to bring more affordable living units into the villages to accommodate all of those needs. Because loosening up real estate is really yeah. the issue. Well, what the housing needs assessment, you probably seen it. No, I've read it from cover to cover. Okay. So it, it gives the trends. It also says if we continue on this trend, we could have 
this much more senior housing, we could have this more, more high-end housing, that we could have this much rental housing, if we continue on that trend. First of all, we need to decide whether we want to continue on that trend, and I think most people don't think we do. In other words, we, most of us don't think we should continue to be getting older, wider, and richer, and having less people be able to afford to live here. So, um, council, yes. Uh, can we talk about this uh, when we talk about the comprehensive land use plan at the end of the meeting? Can talk about it when? At the end of the meeting when we talk about the comprehensive land use plan? I, I don't, well, let, let me just wrap this up. Okay. So when I'm talking about strategy, I'm talking about we may see, we may say we are going to offer down payment assistance for low income homes. That would be a strategy. That's not the need might be we need uh, 100 more units of workforce housing for family, fam families who make median income. That would be the need. The strategy might be down payment assistance. So that's the distinction. So we're accumulating lists of possible strategies. Some may work here, some may not. So that's we're, we're trying we're doing more than you know more than one track. Okay. Um, next, uh, citizens' comments. So this is when we're going to talk about um, the communications that we got from the um, ad hoc Bell's renovation committee. Is that you, Me. Peter? Can you come up and introduce yourself, please? Yeah, I'm Peter Townsend. I'm uh, currently a resident scholar at Antioch College. Um, You'll note that this is just a concept paper. This is no plan set in stone. No plans really uh, have gone anywhere yet. Um, we haven't talked to the Board of Trustees, and they have to approve it. It would require the college acquiring a portion of the parking lot for Brittany Laboratories. They have a 20,000 square foot parking lot, and at the present time, they park six cars in it. So at least in terms of their needs, they don't show uh, look like they need it, but who knows. Um, and of course, it would need to be rezoned. And probably there's lots of things I haven't thought about here. So the building's structurally very sound. It's really impressive how well built it is, and what good condition it's in. Um, if anyone has been in the building about 20 years ago, the roof leaked and some of the ceiling tiles on the second, third floor have fallen and they've never been cleaned up. So it looks, on the third floor, it looks unkempt, but it's really very sad. Um, so it needs a new roof. The floors and the roof deck are all solid. Interior walls are concrete block. They can't be uh, really removed. Is it so? Walls. The interior walls are all concrete block, and so the footprint of the building and the spaces are blocked in, but uh, doors could be cut between what used to be individual little offices and larger spaces be created either for an office suite or for apartments. They'd be small apartments, um, or at least most of them would be small apartments. There are, is one area of the building that has larger rooms. Um, and of course, it would need all the electric, heating, cooling, and new windows, and new plumbing. So it's a, it's a job. Um, we haven't approached anybody, and it we're not at a point where we could approach anybody to do anything. This is just an informational sharing thing. Um, so, if you got questions, shoot. Um, um, I, yeah, it, in the education zone, uh -huh. you can have uh, multifamily dwellings and oh. you can have office research. It may, depending on what it is you want to do, and, and you could actually set up a meeting with me, uh, and I, I'll meet with you one on one and kind of go over what, what can be done in that zone. Great. With, you may not need to rezone it. Um, in fact, if you have educational zoning, you don't want to rezone. You have a lot more options for 
grant yeah. to run through the college that you would never have once you rezone your president. Thank you. So, uh, you know, if you want to call me and we can set up a time and, and then I can let you know, it, based on what it is you, your final concept is of what you're planning on doing, it may be a permitted use, it may be a conditional use. If it's a conditional use, then you will come back to this body again. Yeah. Well, yeah, at this stage we don't have yeah. anything set in stone except that the building is sitting empty. It's really a sound building. And uh, it seems a shame not to use it and the village says they'd like appropriate housing, so maybe it's a win-win. Anything else? Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, um, so moving on to public hearings. Can I run downstairs real fast, Mike? Move on. Yeah, we're going to go with the, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're going to give a presentation on the um, conditional use application for 107 Cliff Street. Okay. Um, before we get started, full disclosure here I am one lot away from being a neighbor of the Holy Oaks. I've known Holy Oaks for 20 some odd years. Um, I don't think that I can't be impartial relative to this, but if planning commission members or the applicant thinks that I might be, I think it's a good time to recuse myself. In that situation, what do you do? I'm copying you, Ted. What that which way to vote? I don't yeah, I mean, usually in BZA, you know, because we, we're a small village, everybody knows each other on some level. You know, I don't have any financial interest in this, um, but we always just kind of threw it to the board, and, you know, if there was the perception of an impropriety, you know, the board just got to, and then we kind of said, let's, it would be better to recuse them or not, and that's kind of what I was throwing up So I'm just, you know, being fully vetted. Since I know everybody on the board, and if you all recruit yourself, <laughs> <might it help? laughs> um, is, is everybody okay, okay. with the, the yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. Something were to come up, you could ask you to recuse yourself, but I don't think at this time that's necessary. Okay. Okay, so the Holyoke's uh, plan to build uh, an accessory structure. It's going to be a garage uh, with an apartment above. Um, he's going to be using his uh, straw bale uh, just infill, which he's done uh, in other locations around town with success. Um, the uh, lot is uh, uh, on a corner, so According to the zoning code, when there's two front lot lines, the shorter of the two lot lines becomes the front. So the facing, the front facing uh, lot line is on Railroad Street with the rear uh, at the location of the neighbor's uh, driveway entrance. So because of that, they needed to keep their, um, their setbacks uh, 10 feet from the rear and 5 feet from the side. And that is what they have done. So this also meets the, uh, it's less than 66% at 560 square feet. And uh, I believe you plan on living there yourself at some point. Uh, it's a good possibility. Yeah. And the, uh, as far as parking, the, um, you need to have 20 feet for a driveway, but this is a very unusual lot and that the park has always been, there's a big uh, patch there that is right away. And so a portion of that, you've always parked your vehicles there. 
uh, in that area that is actually in the village right away. Yeah. But um, that coupled with the setback <clears throat> for the garage, uh, he'll be more than 20 feet. Any discussion from the board? I think it fits right in with the intent of the new zoning code. I'm absolutely in favor of this. And we'll put a motion to approve as submitted. Second. Should I call the roll before we hear from the applicant? I just wanted to open the public hearing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I had to have the public hearing first. Yes. Thank you. And also to see if um, Andy wanted to say anything. Yeah, that's what I was saying yeah, from that. Um, Does the microphone work or can I sit here? No. Yes. Um, Your microphones don't work with this one? That one up there works. Yeah. Yeah. We want you in the second. I thought I got away with that using the microphone. <laughs> um, all I want to say is I've got a really fine self portrait on the wall right outside here. So. Um, and if uh, I don't have anything else to say, I don't think. Assuming everybody's in favor, or both, or assuming a majority is in favor, I don't need to say anything. I have a really fine letter from my neighbor to the rear saying how much he wants you to approve it, but I didn't think I'd have to pull it out. I just wanted to ask, what are you planning on using the dwelling, accessory dwelling for? Well, our main concept is we will move into it and then rent out the house we live in now. Um, conceivably, we would rent it out instead and stay where we are, but our, our main, our primary focus would be the downsides. Okay. Will it have a microwave? Oh, good point. It will have a whole kitchen. Yeah. But my wife swore off microwaves because she said they were bad. So. Well, you know, it's re required. I know it's Wait, bad. that would harm <laughs> us. Oh, can we? Oh, can we do that? I would like to do that. That's my... Uh, particularly if it has a stove. I mean, particularly if you just don't want to have a microwave. Right, it could have a stove. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was a microwave in case there's not a stove there. But since it's pretty clear that it requires a microwave, we should probably make that next moment to let all this joke about it. I, I well, I didn't know if that was the difference between an accessory dwelling versus a regular primary. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a means to be able to cook if you have a stove, it can replace the microwave. It can. Okay. But you have to have, in order to call it a dwelling unit by the Ohio Building Code, you have to have a means. I think it pretty. It says oh. stove as well. No, it, it doesn't. No, that's oh, why I just thought it might be where could have that. I was like, okay, <laughs> but that's good enough. Oh, okay, so it's so. microwave or stove. Yeah. It says microwave on stove and sink. Oh, oh see, I, that's what I thought. Okay, so. All right. Did you folks want to address Denise's raised question on the report regarding stormwater runoff, or you good with that? Denise had, had said Planning Commission may want to consider stormwater issues. You may not, but she, she did raise it in her recommendations. Do you want to give any other comments about what the is there are there problems in that area with stormwater runoff? There's a creek right behind it, right? Yeah, we have very good drainage. Okay. All right. Um, if everyone's all right with that, I'm going to move forward and open the <coughs> uh, public hearing. public hearing. Thank you, Susan. Um, any comments from the public? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it back up here. There's a motion on the table with one uh, change. 
Do, it's simpler if you just make a new motion because I'm just going to amend the motion. If you truly want to remove that darn microwave and put that in your motion, I would suggest a new motion. But if it's saying it's either or, it doesn't matter if you even have it then. It doesn't it's not say either or. or. It's a comma. Oh, okay, it's a comma. Okay, I'm going to make the motion that we approve this with the condition with what would without, without the requirement without the requirement for having a microwave. Well, I second it. But I do. I would it. offer an amendment to that yeah. and suggest that we say either or. Okay. Microwave or stove in the event that. Yeah, well, stove is already required. Either or. Okay. It means to, it's a means to be able to heat and cook food. If a microwave or a stove meets that requirement, then that meets the intent of the Ohio building code. But and I would suggest that we don't restrict the applicant from choosing either one of those two if in the event that he wants to rent it and get the stove out of there or rent it and get the microwave out of there. So we can say either or and be fine. All right. Right now it's required both in the zoning code. So we, I, I'm, I'm in favor of that though. That's fine. Okay, so you are moving to approve um, the conditional use with either a stove or a microwave, but not the requirement of both. What happened to our other motion? Yeah. That's a point of order. We probably need to. What do we do with mo Ted made the original motion, I seconded it, and we moved on to another motion. We uh, probably were premature to. Well, we work it, so what should we do? All right, so they're there in effect. So there was discussion on your initial motion. Yes. That discussion led to a proposal to amend the motion. So there needs to be a second to amend the motion, I believe. Then, then but there wasn't. We made a new motion. I made it. Couldn't it actually motion. be Ted and Mary Ann who agreed to amend their motion since it was Ted's motion and Mary Ann seconded it? I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the second the second motion is still uh, to me you should still under discussion. So if you amend you change that and you simply say I move to amend the initial motion to waive the requirement of both stove and microwave and require that one or the other be required. I That's that motion. Second. 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 Um, amendment. So now, Rose, you are going to call a vote on the amended motion. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Me. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So are you going to change the law? Or that, that didn't change Just the for law. you. That's only for me. I bring it up every time. We'll eventually change it. Everyone's happy as long as your food is hot. Yeah. Unless it's cold food. And we're all coming over for dinner. Not if I'm cooking. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're going to move on to um, talking about how we're going to address the comprehensive land use plan. We've had some discussion of this in the past. Um, Frank, what, what, does, what does everyone think? There is no time to There is no time. No. I mean, it, when would we like to have it? Well, it would be nice to have it before the end of the year. Okay. That would be nice. Um, I think you've all received, you sent copies of the 2010. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And now she sent, she sent all these appendixes. So I don't know if this would be something we want to meet, like, in a, in a 
on a committee level, like during the week, and kind of work on it uh, outside of the planning commission uh, meeting, as far as doing the nitty gritty stuff, and then bring those drafts back. I, I guess right now we just need to formulate a process. And well, a document is doing the size. Uh, you don't. You can't start with the small things. You got to start with the, the whole package, looking at the overall organization, the overall content. Okay. Uh, because if you start working on a section and just spend ten hours working on a section later on, you may decide to cut that section or you get something like that, and then you've wasted the time. So I think maybe a way to proceed is for everybody to look over the whole document, decide in light of you know, what's already there, do we need to keep all those major sections in it? Do we want to keep all those sections in it in the order that they're currently there? What additional sections do we want to add, for example, with the, the I forget the name of it, but the transportation philosophy, what was the name of that? Active transportation. Yeah. Transportation. You know, do we want that to be a, a section of it? And where do we want it to be? Climate action plan. Right. You know, what new sections need to get added? Sort of start with those big questions, and then once we decide what the overall shape and content is going to be, then we can start working on individual sections from there. I agree. I, my first attempt when I read the plan was first redo my own index. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's frustrating to see a document that doesn't have an index. And that gives me order in which to look at how is this thing thought through from yeah, top to bottom. It's all over the place. It is all over yeah. the place. Um, and so, you know, I, in my first set of comments, I started to come up with my own index uh, to just try to house this in more of a planning approach, looking at, you know, the things of an introduction, what's the purpose of this document, going into an overview. Uh, history overview, uh, then talking about regional impact, talking about local impact, and then working down all the way into the core of the village and how all of the things that affect the decisions are made. That's a typical comprehensive plan layout. You know, this plan is just everywhere and it's very wordy where it doesn't need to be. Simple statements can suffice. Um, my other comment was that I really felt there weren't enough visual attachments. I mean, there should be a map, you know, the same base map with information on that base map for almost every single section to, to help put a visualization on how this whole thing looks like uh, in the village. And so, you know, I, I totally agree with Frank. I think the first step is to really look at re-indexing it. Uh, including the things that we know are on the table, the housing needs assessment. Uh, that, you know, I mean, it, there's a list of those things. You probably know that list better than anybody um, of things that we want to consider and how they might fit into an overview of that in new index, and then start a strategy to pick. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a hard enough that first step. Yeah, well, and the first step might be for us all to just really go through it, kind of with a fine tooth comb like that, and, and put together our own our own index, mm -hmm. as you call it, and then come together again and compare notes. Yeah. And go yeah, because I think that, you know, with five people looking mm -hmm. at it, you know, it's it's really good to get five different, yeah. completely different views of what that, how that order looks, how that index looks. Yeah. Um, you know, that's really going to get us more of a consensus movement forward to coming up with a strategy on where to move next. So, yeah, I agree. I think that's a great first step. So is that something we could shoot for to try to do by our next monthly meeting? Do we have a lot of stuff on the agenda for next meeting, or do we want to have a special meeting? I mean, you know, I, I never know. I mean, yeah. right now, no. But okay. I'm sure we'll have something, but it won't be. I think that there is going to be an occasion where we may have a special planning in a literally a work session meeting, yeah, yeah. Um, where we've got an easel with some yeah. pens and you know that base map. That's why I like the base map. Yeah. You know, but have that on every presentation, and then we can sit and talk five different you know yeah. views of what that means. Yeah, have the index up on a yeah. board. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Frank, what is it that you're wanting us to do by the next meeting? Uh, I would say read through the document, make some, you know, generate some thoughts about overall content, overall organization. What we want to add, what we want all the appendixes yeah. that yeah. are there, and some some may not need to be there, and then we have things that aren't there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like we had, I don't know, is the well, the housing right. police assessment is one that's not in here. It's just yeah. the old one, yeah. the um, vision plan. The I think they incorporated parts of the vision plan into it, but not much. The um, the part that came out of the vision plan were the value sections that went through that whole. There was a whole section that had on the values, and then the values matched the categories on how that worked. I thought that was very good, actually. But um, there's also a document, the Bicycle Enhancement Committee document that I think rolls into the active transportation thing. Um, there was a map that one definitely got to have a map. Sidewalk study. Sidewalk study should go into the transportation board. So, and one of the things that we do while we're thinking of things that need to be added, if those things actually exist, can we email Judy and ask for them to be and if we available? Can probably, if we find them, I, I probably could find them somewhere. No. Yeah. So if you think of those things, email Judy and she'll let me know. She'll, yeah. yeah. Um, Then Judy will send them to us. Judy will have them in, a, in the packet? Yeah. Okay. If Another we can get them to you ahead of time, we will. Yes. That would be helpful to, I don't know who, does, who would do this if we have anything on record, but what, what properties around the village are already underneath? You know, I mean, since that last plan, any of the, the Glen is now. Um, well, the council land, of course, has that plan. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, would be really great. Yeah. I, I'd like a document that has all of the conditional use uh, things that we've done, you know, it, for, for zoning and planning purposes, um, you know, where the actual like where there are businesses in residential districts or where there are accessory walling units that have been um, approved. Maybe a list mm -hmm. of, of conditional use approvals that have gone through. Have we tracked that or is that something? I mean, I have. I, I, it goes back. It's sketchy in the, in the some missing years, but yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How does that fit into the comprehensive plan? You don't think that's part of the comprehensive, that should be part of the comprehensive plan? No, I think there's a statement about density, um, trying to improve on density, yeah. uh, trying to improve on mixed income, uh, some mixed use in some areas, uh, downtown. You know. but, I mean, but, but these are the kind of conversations we can have. Where, yeah, yeah. Right, you know, so if you think that you'd like to see it in there, then add it to your list. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, if it, if it triggers conversation about yeah. how there's organizational things, absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I I haven't seen a comprehensive list of but it, that, so I don't know whether or not it, it says anything or doesn't say anything. I think more than the use, I think it's more what we want to see is the land. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, a map of the, of the properties that are around that are not developed yet. Yeah. Um, current state of the current state, land. and then because the next time that zoning uh, or that that comprehensive land use plan is updated, maybe some of those properties will no longer be in in that. But then also, I guess thinking of what Rose was saying, say like in uh, Resident C, might be interesting. What where are businesses? I mean, are, because that was liberalized oh, yeah. to both the residents. Residents, and but also businesses. So, are businesses expanding? That, and, that, that's and, the kind of and a thing lot of those is, things are uses changing. So yeah. Change yeah. with you know they sort of are grandfathered in, and people don't come back and 
they're being, you know, it's a new business or, you know, it follows the property more than it follows a person. And it would be, uh, I, I know it's not technically land, but. Well, the comprehensive plan is a, it's a policy document. Yeah. You know, that's the difference between it and the zoning code. And, you know, in my mind, that's a zoning code designation. I okay. think, though, that the, you know, the comprehensive plan should definitely address the changes that we've done in the zoning code to the map, because we did. We changed districts pretty significantly, you know, uh, down the cores, the major cores, Dayton Street and Pink Avenue. And so that, when we go through that, I think, you know, you brought up a great point about looking, kind of doing a little map of where all the conditional uses have happened. Yeah. And is there a pattern to that? You know, does that pattern fit with the intent of what the zoning code changes have been? And that's where it comes into a policy. Yeah. So there's validity in that for sure. And some of the data from the housing needs assessment can be, which where they clearly looked at that, like accessory to long units and things like that, can be woven into this. Yeah, I think some sections will go really quick. I think the other sections are really going to take a while. The housing needs part and the transportation part are going to be really long and drawn out. You know, because, you know, in my mind, one of the big policy things that the village has tried to really push is walkability and bikeability, and that's not evident when you read our comprehensive plan. It should be loud and bold, um, and then followed up with the work that's been done to try to achieve it, yeah. and it's just not showing up. You know, so that's one of my little bones of the picture, but like I said. And then we have the Parks Master Plan document from 1993, or <laughs> <laughs> whatever, eight. There's a lot of that. So there, was a, there was a lot of planning going on. Yeah. Not much happened. It's so old that, you know, I think we have a couple parks since then, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, skate park, women's park. Well, and the gardens. You know, how does community yeah. gardens fit in? Yeah. Right. Land? Where's the dog park, by the way? It's too bad we don't have that, but it's another thing. It's in the yeah. 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 <laughs> It's Twin Towers. <laughs> That's where people take it off and then lose. You know, I, I saw in my Facebook page three years ago was the Antioch, um, what was that called? Where they talked about their base land. Yeah. yeah. The charade. Charette. <laughs> Charette. And they <laughs> talked about the dog park. They almost got there. Yeah. And then they just now they're going to do houses there. So, okay. But do you feel, Frank, that we're okay with yeah. this assignment? Yeah. And we yeah. can yeah. go yeah. forward. So, so the next yeah. meeting is April 12th. Same day as this one. You know these short ones are so weird. I'm sorry. April 13th? No. April 9th. It was March and April, or it was February and March, they were pretty well. Yeah, nice. Well, Denise and I can, if you'd like, um, in that agenda, on that agenda, parse out how much time it looks like you'll need so you can say in C's, you know, overall view in sort of assign times to those so you've got something of a framework if you want us to do that. You know, that's going to conflict with the housing needs assessment. Do we, would we want to in April maybe have, could we have it on another day? I know. Source water protection plan, probably another thing. Especially the time of travel. Isn't it during the day? Oh, well, that one's at 6 o'clock at the Devil's Church. Let me say go ahead. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to go ahead. 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 I'm not going to go 
keep it for the for the night. And I'm I don't have to be at all of those meetings, so uh, with a child needs assessment. Which is at six on the night. You don't have to be at all of them there. What? No, I don't, but I'll be as many as I can. Okay. Planning Commission is the same night as the Baptist Church. Oh, it's not the 12th. No. Oh, that was February and March, sorry. Oh. Um, was, <laughs> that was 12. I don't know why I thought that. So, yeah, I'll be here. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, we're going to. So new business. Shouldn't I talk about that? Do you know how many? I don't have any. Okay. And agenda planning, we sort of just did that. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn? Just a minute. I'd like to see if we are all going to be able to go to at least one of the sessions. Do we? So none of us can go to the night. But there's the fourth. Do you, and do you know what time those meetings are? Yeah. The, the fourth is um, at seven o'clock at Mills Lawn. Mills Lawn. In the evening. In the evening. The fifth is ten thirty. Ten thirty in the morning at the senior center. Yeah. And how long do you anticipate those lasting? No. Well, sure. we're budgeting for an hour and a half. Okay. So it won't last more than two hours. And the 21st is Saturday at 2, 7 p.m. here. And then you can also come and see Roller Derby at the Haines Convention Center at 5. And the 4th, he says, what, 7 at Mills Lawn? Yes. I'll be able to go on the 4th. Yeah, probably. Wednesday, 22 o'clock. I can probably be here at John Rolls. I might try off the. Next month. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Um, all in favor? Yep. Yes. Aye. <coughs> Who made that motion? So yeah, I